Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul. Hope you're having an amazing day. AMD's Granite Ridge line of processors, which of course will be a Ryzen 9000 for the desktop, is getting much of the attention at the moment in the press, and for good reason. It is shaping up to be an absolutely awesome line of CPUs, and I suspect will sell extremely well for not only DIY system builders, but also if you're just kind of buying a pre-built, um, I suspect that these processors will be extremely popular. But you also can't forget about Strix Point, which will be a range of APUs also based on Zen 5 and feature a large number of RDNA 3 plus or RDNA 3.5 if you prefer compute units. These will be found in a number of different laptop designs and from what I'm understanding anyway OEMs are actually very excited about these products. We'll talk more about the specifications in just a moment we'll just go over them pretty quickly because quite frankly I have discussed the specifications a number of times in other videos so we'll just give you guys a TLDR on that but I do want to talk to you about some benchmarks. So Xeno Assassin, who's had a pretty good track record with various leaks. I want to give credit to WCCF Tech, which is where I initially spotted this, has basically leaked some results for the 12 compute unit configuration, and that's scoring around 3,150 points in Time Spy, and that's at just 22 to 24 watts. Meanwhile, 4,000 points is roughly what you can expect for the full configuration, so I'm assuming that that means 16 um, compute units or eight workgroup processors if you prefer. Now to put that into some context, the RTX 3050 in the very same benchmark will score, well, it's certainly going to beat these results. You're probably going to be looking at around 4,800 points for the RTX 3050. However, that is operating at 50 watts. And of course, that would just be the RTX 3050 period so that's very impressive like that would be absolutely amazing and then if you compare it against let's say the um radeon 780m that would score around 2400 points so it's definitely a very very good jump from generation to generation there are of course some limitations here simply because well, one, memory bandwidth is a thing, and two, obviously, um, they are only operating at quite a limited TDP. So it's going to be very interesting to see what happens with laptop manufacturers when they really start to push this thing with either really fast memory or they just kind of let the clock frequencies kind of just go absolutely ballistic, well, as ballistic as they can, obviously. Um, so as for the configuration so it does seem to be a monolithic design for the lower end variants which is again up to 16 compute units so the specifications i've personally heard um, is that we're going to be seeing up to uh, eight um, zen 5c cores and four zen 5 cores again eight um, RDNA 3.5 workgroup processors. I've heard that you can get over 3 gigahertz, but I don't know if they manage to achieve those clock frequencies or not. And that, of course, would be assuming they have enough uh, energy going into the chip to be able to achieve that. And memory support is uh, DDR5-6400 or LP, um, LPDDR5X um, at 85 33. So honestly, that is very impressive indeed, and we will see just how well these things actually do in the real world, but from all of the leaks that I've heard personally, I do suspect that they will be very impressive. There is also Sarlacc as well. Uh, you might also know this as the Strix Point Halo variants. So this is going to be 16 cores, 32 threads, based on Zen 5, from what I understand. It looks like it's got 32 megabytes of L3 cache, and as for the number of uh, compute units, it will be 40 again based on RDNA 3.5. Um, I have heard some very, very impressive benchmarks, but I can't confirm at the moment. I've heard it's going to be roughly around the 7600 m in terms of performance, so that is very impressive. But again, I haven't managed to confirm that as true or untrue, so... It does somewhat worry me about the memory bandwidth, but what I have heard is that uh, the L3 cache can also be unified and does seem to um, essentially help out the uh, 
uh, GPU's memory bandwidth. So honestly, I am pretty excited about Sarlacc as well as Strix Point as a whole, because I do think obviously that uh, APUs are just absolutely excellent for laptop designs. Um, clearly though, with, you know, something around, you know, the if it's scoring, let's say, around 4,000 points in Time Spy, that is certainly not going to be running games like Cyberpunk at, like, 4K or anything like that, obviously. But I think for a lot of users who just want, like, you know, entry-level gaming, it's certainly going to be able to run many esports titles absolutely excellently, and certainly decent as well for productivity tasks as well. Moving on, I want to talk to you guys about Battle Mage, because Battle Mage has been an interesting one. So I already leaked some various roadmaps and images, internal ones from Intel quite some time ago, last year actually. And honestly, Intel themselves have essentially confirmed that the design in terms of the hardware is finished. They also stated that now the team is working on Celestial in terms of the hardware anyway, and all of the software is being basically worked on for Battle Mage. So the hardware is done, it's just the software side of things. And from what I'd initially leaked for the release target for Battle Mage, according to, again, internal roadmaps from Intel, it seemed to be, well, kind of now-ish, actually. This is when we we're supposed to see the GPUs. Basically, it seemed that they were kind of sampling in the first quarter of the year, and then the actual release date was going to be sometime in the second quarter. But I have asked a number of sources, and quite frankly, I haven't really heard much, just that they are still working on the software, which obviously just matches essentially what was stated officially um, by... Um, I'm trying to remember the person's name, uh, Tom Peterson. So, what about now? Well, there was an interesting report actually over at Computerbase. A number of you actually linked uh, linked me this, excuse me, on Twitter. And what they have basically stated is that they seem to want to release this product no later than November. Because what they want to do, obviously, is capitalize on things like Black Friday. So, it's going to be very interesting because... If you compare back to when ARC, the first generation, was released, that was in October 2022. So, roughly speaking, you could maybe say that's a two-year gap between one to the other. But, again, from everything that seems to be, you know, floating around, including from Intel themselves, it is primarily the software side of things that is delaying the launch. Now, it will be interesting to see how uh, Battle Mage is actually priced, because according to other reports online, and also my own sources, quite frankly, I've heard that Intel um, will certainly not be alone in launching a new GPU architecture this year. Uh, perhaps one of the big ones is the RTX 50 launch. However, you can obviously say that the RTX 5090 is going to be considerably more powerful than Battle Mage, Depending on the time of the day, the source, and quite frankly, the benchmark, Battle Mage seems to be roughly, and this is the Halo variant, between the RTX 4070 and perhaps 4070 Ti at best. So, assume, let's even say, like, you know, the stars align and it's an RTX 4080, which is more than, you know, I've heard it actually does perform like, but let's hypothetically say that they managed to squeeze a little bit of extra juice out of the thing, and it's an RTX 4080. By the time all of the software is done, they managed to wrangle a couple of extra 100 megahertz out of it, whatever. Let's just hypothetically say that it does perform like an RTX 4080, which again, would be faster than what I'm hearing it will target, but let's just assume that it's a 4080 that is still going to get absolutely massacred, of course, by the 5080 and the 5090. So again, the release of Battle Mage is gonna be very price dependent, which that's fine you know honestly even if it is an rtx 4070 it performs like if it's a good price people will certainly buy it assuming the software is up to snuff which is honestly the really big thing it's like when it comes to a gpu it really is down to the software it's not just down to like you know the software in terms of is it stable people expect a lot of uh, features at this point obviously xcss has been a pretty well received um, upsc upscaling solution but there's also a ton of other things which really go into it including of course day one uh, driver updates because obviously intel um you know they have done pretty well over the past several months i think with the um alchemist release but uh 
certainly early Alchemist drivers were not exactly the best, especially for like legacy titles, like using like um, DirectX like 11, stuff like that. Anyway, guys, I think that's just about it for this particular video. Hopefully you have enjoyed it. I'll see you soon. Take care of yourselves. Bye for now.